Hi. In this session, we'll cover BDD and how it is used in LM Octane. The session is actually about converting manual test to automation test using Gherkin. In today's session, we'll see how BDD is coming to the rescue. We'll start with the terminology, then we'll describe a few problems or communication gaps that happens in a real project and how BDD can help you. Then we'll review the demo flow. The demo flow is, is the process of how to take a BDD test, which is manual, converting it into automation, but also how it is used in LM Octane. Then we'll move to a live demo. Enjoy. So BDD, there's a lot of buzzwords there. BDD, Cucumber, Gherkin. Um, so let's start with just an order in all those terms. So BDD, Behavior Driven Development, this is actually the process. The process was uh, started from um, TDD, Test Driven Development, and BDD is just another business uh, layer on top of that. BDD doesn't assume to use any tool. It's just a methodology, and then there's a few specific tool automation tools that help you implement BDD. One of the most common tools is Cucumber, and this is the tool that ALM Octane also integrate with. It's a third-party tool, it's an open source, uh, and it's a software tool. It allows automating of acceptance tests, which are written in behavior-driven development style. And last, Gherkin. Gherkin is the language that Cucumber understands. It's a business language, and you'll see shortly how easy it is to read a Gherkin-style test. All those tests are stored in a dot .feature file, and this is the source file that is needed in order to start the process. In those source files, you can see the terminology of given, when, then, that is used as the syntax. So let's discuss a little bit about problems you may face during development where BDD is actually not in the process. So the first problem, and those are also problems that we have uh, faced before implemented BDD process in our project, is that nobody actually knows what the automation test covers. Why is it happening? Um, first, because the automation tests are code. It's hard to read and it's hard to understand what they're covering even if you do no code. Second, it causes the QA team to either duplicate their effort because they're not sure exactly what the um, automation covers, um, and then you're actually creating double effort on the same areas. Or, on the other hand, you may cause a gap in the coverage. Therefore, flows are not tested in the automation, but they're also not tested in the manual flows. The second problem is sometimes it's even hard to communicate changes as a development starts. So we start with a feature and we start with initial design. But as we go through the development process, changes may occur. And the communication between those changes and what actually is being tested is something that is hard to close. The result is that test eventually fails, not because they're not good, but because the definition and the implementation of the feature changed, but nobody informed the QA or the tests were hard to track and follow and to understand where updates and changes need to happen. So I hope those problems are something that you also been facing or at least recognize as issues um, and we have as well. So let's see how BDD and how the LM Octane implementation can help you deal with those problems. So here's the flow of using BDD within a um, development process. It starts with either a customer or a product owner or a business analyst who writes down the feature description. This is happening even before the first line of code has been starting to be created. You can see that there is a title there called feature. This is where you explain what is the goal of the feature and what is it doing. In this example, a basic shopping cart experience so that users can shop for items. Then you can add a background. A background is something that should happen in the software before this scenario is running. So for example, 
given a global administration name, Greg, and a customer is named Wilson. Last, this is the scenario. You can have multiple scenario, and all of those scenarios are being wrapped in this dot feature file, the source file. So the scenario in our case is user add item to the cart, given I am logged in user, when I go to the item page and I click item to the cart, then something happened. So this is your verification uh, area. Those guidelines, first of all, as you saw, they're readable. We can read them and we can create them. Uh, it takes a little bit practice to write it in the right way, but after two or three trials, it's becoming uh, much easier. Then this is the guidelines for the developer, the tester, and later on the documentation team to create the automation based on that. Actually, every line here will become um, a function. Let's review the demo flow as it's running between ALM Octane, the IPD plugin, and the CI system. It starts with the product owner who creates a feature. After creating the feature, he will create an acceptance test for that feature in Gherkin syntax and connect it and link it to that feature for coverage. He can create multiple acceptance tests if needed or have a single test with few scenarios embedded. Then a tester from ALM Octane can run those tests manually and create coverage using the manual runner, which can read the Gherkin syntax and act upon it with pass and fail steps. When the test is ready to automate, the tester changed the status into ready for automation. Then the developer within his IDE plugin will see this test as something that is ready for work. The developer will pull the dot feature file created in LM Octane, will save it locally in his Git, and then start to automate it using Cucumber, as was described before as the software tool. Then when the test is ready and it's checked in together with the code, we're letting the CI run, pulling all the tests and all the code, compiling it and returning the test run results to ALM Octane. When this happens, now the test is automated and it is linked automatically using ALM Octane plugin into the same manual test that the tester created. Therefore, we're not creating two instances of the test, we're simply changing it from a manual interface to an automation one once we're discovering that this test was executed via the CI. We'll show you in the demo how we're making this linkage. When the process is done, you can see the coverage. But we also allow you to create, to see updates. So for example, when the developer understand that something has changed during the definitions of the development, he can then from his IDE change the scenario itself, the definitions. This is actually where the communication gap is being closed using BDD, because this dot feature file is being versioned, showing later on to the business analyst that somebody has changed the definition. So the, test, the automation test can be running, but the business analyst within ALM Octane can either accept the changes and understand that something has changed in the definition or rejects it. In the live demo, we'll show you how BDD is being implemented in ALM Octane. For this demo, we'll first show you the process that we have described in the previous slide, showing how a feature is created, coverage is being created, and then from manual to automation. But furthermore, for this demo tenant that we have used, we have copied some of our own tests that we're using. So you'll see Gherkin tests that are covering uh, ALM Octane features, which is really interesting to see how we're creating those um, definitions. Enjoy. In ALM Octane, we aim to support the BDD methodology while letting all the stakeholders work in their native environments. First of all, we would like to enable business stakeholders to create, update, and view the dot feature files. 
In addition, through an integration with the CI system, we provide visibility for the cur current versions of the dot .feature file in the automation code and simple approval mechanism in case of differences. Dot .feature file are modeled as tests and can be run manually until the automation is ready. And those tests can be assigned to an automation owner. We will also enable everybody to see the status of the dot feature. Let's start. Let's navigate to the backlog. In the backlog, you can see an epic called entities. And currently, there is one feature there. User can delete an entity. Let's add another feature that the user can add attachments to an entity. Let's go to that feature and add a Gherkin test that covers this feature. This is the script. The script is currently empty and it shows you a number. You can see it's TID and a number. This will actually be the identifier that once this test is automated and run through the CI, we'll be able to link it to this dot feature file definition. Let's now create the feature and the definition we'd like to test for this feature called user can add attachments to an entity. So we have pasted here uh, the actual scenario from our own implementation, as you know, in LMUKTEN, we can add attachments to entity. Let's read a little bit the syntax and what it is covering. So the feature is covering attachments, and there's a few scenarios. One is to add attachment for a new defect. The second one is to add a movie, since it's different, it's bigger, and therefore the um, definitions might be a bit different. There's also a scenario which we call scenario outline, and here we're talking about viewing attachment. An outline means that there are different uh, values or parameters we would like to use. So you can see here the parameter, the type of the attachment, and on the bottom, all the file extensions that we would like to try. So there's JPEG and BMP, etc. In LMOctane, we can identify the syntax and we're validating it, and therefore you can see highlights for both uh, the syntax and also for the parameterization. If you will make the mistake here, the editor will allow you to see it and also to fix it. So let's now change something in the syntax so you'll see how the editor is reading those errors. Here it is. Let's fix it. Let's scroll down some more to see what additional scenarios we have created. So here's another scenario outline, this time about attachment indications. And here we have used a couple of parameters. So this is a standard syntax in um, Gherkin, and you can read about it um, in the web. So that's it. We have the scenario, we can save it. If needed, you can save a version and use that. We also provide in the documentation, some guidelines of how to start your first scenarios. So by clicking the question mark, you can use our online documentation to get some syntax example of how to create a feature with background and scenario and scenario outline, which uses parameters. So our test is ready. We can go to the details change the settings, make it ready for design, create an owner. And from our perspective, coverage is done. We can add user tags, whatever we wish, and it is ready for manual execution. Oh, I guess I'll be the owner for this execution. Now let's run this test. You can do it either from here, from within the test, or from the grids. We're clicking run the test. As you can see, it's assigned to release. We can give it a name and we can choose the environment. In our case, we're using uh, a dev environment, using Chrome and not with IE. So 
So the manual runner was opened, and you can see now that the scenarios are being listed. But what's interesting, if we'll scroll down for the test for the scenario with the outline, you'll see that you don't see that as a table, but actually the manual runner is uh, taking the exact data already and placing it in the right area for the manual tester. So he's really got an easy job, just reviewing the steps and marking pass or fail. Let's start from the beginning. Here's the first scenario that we have done for manage entity attachment, which is the feature. So the first scenario is add attachment to the defect. We can read it when the user creates a new defect. This is, for example, we, we can click the steps and say, OK. If we see that there is a bug, we can report a defect from within the step here. Or if everything is OK, we can just carry on. For every step that is a validation, meaning then, we're providing you an option to mark pass or fail for every validation step. In our case, let's pass everything. So the manual runner allows you an option to pass a specific step. Or if you like, and this is the option we'll choose, we'll pass the entire run and therefore the entire scenario. So the test has passed for Chrome and Dev environment. Once we finish the run, you can see that the run, a second run, was created and it's passed, and the executor was run by the specific tester. You can also review the run report that was generated detailing exactly what has happened, how many steps were skipped, and how many were passed. Also in the grid, you can see the coverage of this run for this feature. So if we'll go back to the grid of the feature, you'll be able to see that there is one single run that passed, and hence we created coverage, a Gherkin-style coverage for this feature. So I guess now we're ready to automate. In order to automate the script, we want to inform the developer that this Gherkin test is ready for automation. Let's go to this feature, to the Gherkin test that covers the feature, and change the status. So we have an automation status, and we're informing the developer that it's ready for automation. That's it. That's everything we have to do from AADM Octane. The next phase will continue from the IDE plugin or the IDE itself of the developer who has the IDE plugin of AADM Octane. Welcome to the developer's world. So here's the IDE plugin on the bottom. And on the top, you can see IntelliJ. This is the work council for the developer. We have refreshed the plugin. And as you can see, since we have created a status of ready for automation, the dev person will see the test being added to his list. He can also filter the test by status. Mm -hmm. And to see the work that is awaiting for him. Next, we would like to download the script and hence retrieve the .feature file that was created in the editor in ALM Octane. We're choosing the right project folder and downloading the file. Once we're downloading it, it will be stored automatically in the enterprise Git of this developer environment. Now you can see the exact same description as we have written before, but now it's in the IDE of the developer. He can see now the guidelines of what he needs to automate, and it's exactly the same view as we saw in ALM Octane. Let's start automating it using Cucumber. So let's look at one of those functions. So when the developer opens the dot .feature file within his IDE, all those lines that we have created in a business style language are now functions. The IDE allows us to now go into the function implementation, which is becoming now automated. The code that you see here is code that's actually working in ALM Octane, and we are checking with it to see whether attachments can actually be appended to entities. 
So let's read it. It's code, I know, but it's pretty simple. So let's try to follow. So the function name is a defect that has an attachment. In the first line, we're creating using REST APIs of LM Octane a defect. Defect, REST, create. Then we're navigating to this defect. We're clicking it to go inside the defect details. And we're selecting the attachment tab. This is where we actually upload the file, again using REST, and giving it a name. And last, we're validating that indeed we're getting this attachment. So we use the command get attachment to see that the file was loaded. And that's it. This test is now being automated and we can run it. The test is now ready. And let's see now how we're triggering the CI execution that takes this test, compile it together with the code and inject the run results back to ALM Octane. So here's Jenkins. We're now simulating a run of the build. Usually this is done automatically when you have a CI system in place. And during the run, all the test run results are being collected. The build is running. You can see that the number is 26. ALM Octane plugin is now listening to this execution. You can also see this pipeline is being updated with the execution. And when the run completes, all the fresh test run results will be injected into LM Octane and reflected in the right tests. So here it is running. The run is complete. And as you can see, our build had two tests. One of them passed and one of them failed. Let's drill down into the fail test and see which test is it. Hmm, surprise, surprise. It's the test we just created. As you can see, it just ran. So here's the automation test. You can see that previously it was a manual run that was that we have run, but now the Gherkin test was automated and it's related to build 26 that we have just triggered from Jenkins. Let's go into the report and see why the run has failed. So now you can see that we have an exception. So the code had thrown an exception in one of the scenarios, and you can see that it couldn't allocate or find the element on the screen. So first of all, you see how much time we saved. Now this long manual test was automated and it's reporting defects from the code itself into our report. Let's report a bug since we found an actual problem and ask our Fearful developer to solve it. We're reporting a defect from within the failed run. In the future releases, we'll also populate a lot of interesting data from this run that will be automatically attached to this defect. So this was the problem, pretty simple. Let's now run again, Jenkins, and see if it solves the problem. A new build is running, build 27. Let's view the progress. Let's view the progress in LM Octane. Build 27 is running, and yeah, he did it. Now both tests are running, Hence, we have fixed the problem. Let's go into the runs of this Gherkin test. And we can see that now it has passed. The report is all green. We can now also go back to the feature to look at the open defect and mark it as fixed. Here is the run for the defect. Since it was so fast, we didn't even have the chance to move it to open. Let's move it to open and straight to fix. Great job.
But now we have changed something. So since we've created this fix, something was changed in the implementation of the feature. The business analyst within ALM Octane sees that the definition were changed. So he's getting this status change that requires approval. You can check what was changed. As you know, ALM Octane embeds Git and hence we can see the changes and see what was changed by the developer. And then the business analyst can either approve or reject the changes. After reviewing the code and the changes, we see that the ID just simply created tabs instead of spaces, hence there were no actual change uh, to the content itself, and hence we can approve the changes. So clicking accept mean everything is now updated, we are synced, and the same definition that we have created is being defined. Now the automation status of this specific test is automated, hence each time the CI will run, this automation test will be executed uh, and hence cover this feature. At any given point, you can still run it manually if you like. So both facets of this test now exist from now until the end of the days. Happy release and hope you enjoy the demo.